In this video, I'm going to talk about how to optimize your scenes in Blender, how to optimize the projects that you're working on. I'm not going to talk about how to speed up your renders because we have a special uh, separate video on that in uh, lighting rendering section in our course, in this course. Instead, we will be focusing on viewport performance and overall performance of Blender when you're working and how to kind of avoid crashes when you're working in Blender. As you can see here, uh, there is a lot of things here. It's a pretty big uh, project. There are millions of polygons here and there is animation, a lot of cameras, lights and things like that. But uh, the viewport is okay, especially uh, even when I'm in Render. Of course, the computer is not very slow. You can see the specs on the screen right now. So, uh, but let's go to solid view and let's look at the scene it's pretty easy to navigate to look around it's not a big problem but uh, not everyone has a very powerful computer and i have seen so many students with pretty powerful systems and still they say blender is annoying because it can't render this and that it crashes when i hit render or uh, the viewport is laggy and stuff like that so if you're one of them, please watch this video and uh, the next time when Blender crashes or when it's laggy before blaming Blender, try to optimize uh, the scene like I show you in this video. So let's get started. Uh, what is the first thing? The first thing is please instance objects and collections. Do not just uh, shift the 100 times to duplicate your uh, meshes. For example, these uh, cars, these objects are original meshes uh, because they are animated, the doors are animated. This is why I just I just left them uh, as mesh objects. This is why I didn't instant them. But the trees here, these all tall trees are uh, just basically one tree instance. And uh, like you see here, when I animate, some trees appear and disappear uh, as time goes by, as you can see. Why did I do that? I just uh, wanted to improve the performance. I just uh, put the trees uh, from place to place uh, so that they are visible in the camera, so that there are more trees visible in the camera. I could, I could have done that even better with only a few trees, moving around uh, depending on what the camera where the camera is looking at but I was a bit too lazy for that so the best thing to do is just uh, put all of your objects which are relevant which are related to each other like one house or a car or a tree everything in one collection and instance it uh, we have a separate video in the next section uh, about how to correctly uh, create collection instances so please watch that video. So the next thing which is very important when it comes to uh, performance, especially viewport performance, is particle systems. Blender has amazing particle systems, hair particle system and dynamic particle system. We have particle system here and whenever possible just hide particles. Just hide from the viewport. Once you are satisfied with the particles, just hide them. For example, if I click on this uh, green land, there is particles here. You can see two particle systems here and I just disabled both of them and I don't want to enable them now. If I enable, the viewport will be uh, quite laggy. Let's enable one of them. Immediately, you can see that the viewport is pretty laggy now. I will come closer to the particles. They're basically some grass and as you can see, the viewport is pretty laggy. Just hide them and the viewport is fast again. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use particles. Uh, I'm saying that you should disable them or minimize the viewport number at least. For example, here we have display amount for viewport and render amount. If I, uh, display, if I change the display amount, uh, lower this number, it can be a bit better, but usually just disable them once you, have, you are satisfied with the result. The next thing that we that you should be careful about is subdivision surface. Uh, I mean the polygon count. They can easily eat up your uh, computer's memory. So 
please use less amount of subdivision surface details. For example, if I click on this object, do we have subdivision surface modifier? No, I have, I think I have already applied it. For example, on this car, I have subdivision levels here. Uh, subdivision level of two, I can just uh, decrease this to one. And if I don't look uh, very close to the car object, I can just get away with uh, less uh, subdivision levels. And Speaking of subdivision levels and particles, there is one thing that is uh, very handy. You can go to render properties and come here to simplify and activate it. And here you can control all the subdivisions in the scene and all the particle systems in the scene. You don't have to search for what object, uh, for example, uh, even a small pillow inside one of these rooms might have a lot of particles and that can be a problem. So you can control all the particles in the scene and all the subdivision levels in the scene with only this simplify option. For example, max subdivisions. If you turn this down to number two, all the subdivisions in your scene will uh, limit to uh, two levels of subdivision. In viewport and in render, you can also limit that. And the particle system, you can just bring it down to zero and volume volumetrics, bring that down to zero. Here too, you can just uh, limit and you have also texture limit uh, like for example uh, for viewport it doesn't make sense because I'm not looking at textures now I, I shouldn't have done that probably so uh, yeah, let's come back and here in renders you can set the texture limit I w I'm going to talk about textures a bit later too so yeah uh, please use this uh, simplify option if uh, if you don't know what is causing the lag in your scene, what is, what is the culprit? If you don't know, if you can't find, just turn on Simplify and bring down all of these numbers. And uh, next thing that is very, very important is just uh, hiding stuff. Hide anything that you don't need to see while you're working. All right. For example, now I have finished this project, so I'm, I don't want to hide anything. I just want to look around and see what's where and how they are looking. But if you're, when you're working, just hide everything. And also, if you noticed, I have turned this off, uh, viewport overlays. I did this because it greatly improved the uh, overall performance of the viewport. Look, if I enable this, just enabling this overlays uh, took a few seconds. So uh, when you don't want to see the overlays, all these uh, extra kind of highlighted highlights or things, you can just disable them. Greatly improve the viewport performance, as you can see. Now it's very uh, laggy, but even worse than that, look, if I want to select some objects, look, if I want to select this uh, pool, for example, let's select. I pressed, I left clicked and I'm waiting still, still waiting, now it's selected. If I want to select this tree, I click on this and I wait, still waiting. So it's so annoying, so uh, sluggish, so uh, what's the problem? It's not because of Blender, it, it's because I have too many things here. Maybe it's a bit, I don't know, maybe it, uh, from Blender's part, maybe it should be a bit faster, but there is a way to kind of speed things up. Just disable this. But if you really want to see the highlight, you can go here and I found what is causing the problem. It's simply the bones. Let's turn this off and that's it. Now selecting is almost immediate, as you can see. Or you can just hide other things for a better view, but uh, highlighting outline selected should be left, yeah, turned on. So you can select things much faster now if you want uh, this. So sometimes you don't know what the culprit could be, so just uh, di disable them, these things, or just hide stuff. For example, you don't know what is causing the lag, so please hide everything that you don't need. And another thing that you can do is come here and do not use matcaps because matcaps also are also a way of different calculation. Try changing this, for example, just use this material or maybe just random colors because you might have changed some uh, viewport options in your materials. Just disable the cavity. Sometimes it should it will help too because uh, it's also some extra calculation for the computer. 
you can just disable specular lighting or other things like uh, do not use any shadows or anything like that so now I'm using shadows and as you can see now the viewport performance is terrible as you can see it even in viewport uh, render it's uh, it's almost impossible to navigate now so don't enable these things and just leave them as off and you can also disable collections by clicking on this uh, ticks just disable them if you don't use them like so just disable and it will greatly improve the performance so the next thing can be, uh, let's uh, very shortly talk about render settings because uh, some people say that a lot of, I have heard this a lot. So, uh, so they say, uh, everything is fine when I'm working, but when I hit this render, for example, when I hit F12, Blender just crashes and just, it, uh, you, you go out of Blender, right, automatically. And it's often because you optimize viewport settings, but forget to disable things and kind of uh, optimize render settings. For example, uh, you have particles, right? Here you have particles. Yeah, I have uh, just disabled them, but uh, I have them enabled for render. As you can see, when I hit render, everything will be visible. Maybe we don't uh, want this particle system in render. Or you can, if you come here, for example, I have 40 for viewport amount and 80 for render amount. Maybe I was uh, satisfied with uh, number 40 and when I watched, the, when I looked at the grass, I was okay, I was satisfied, but I forgot to bring down the number for render amount and it was left 80. And when I hit render, when I hit F12, Blender tries to render with 80 uh, number for particles and so yeah or maybe you don't need particles at all you you decided to not use them and just disable them you have disabled them disabled them in viewport but forgot to disable them in renders also if you disable some things from the viewport like for example you have disabled this from viewport right this car but you forgot to disable it in uh, render so please Look at these settings. There are a lot of uh, places in Blender where you have separate settings for viewport and render. Sometimes you optimize the viewport, but forget to optimize it for renders. And be careful with these main sampling uh, options that you have for rendering, especially in cycles. We have for viewport, I have only 32, but, but for render, I have to 2048, which is 2K. It's, uh, I think it is more than enough. Uh, and you can enable noise threshold and by default it's 0 0.01 you can uh, bring it up to 0 0.1 and bring this down to 128 or 256 also some people don't uh, some people just forget and don't care about is this resolution it will be a very big terrible mistake to increase the resolution just decrease the resolution and render this will greatly this will help you a lot some people just try to render in 4k or even 8k some beginners they uh, want their image to be very kind of sharp and crisp yeah of course if you increase the resolution it will be much cleaner and much uh, better but th this might be one of the reasons that blender crashed during render so just use smaller resolutions it will not only uh, avoid crashing but also render much faster and another thing is a very important thing some people uh, do not even notice this this is shader complexity and texture resolution so shader complexity simply means what kind of how many nodes what kind of uh, nodes you are using to create your materials some people just, uh, you know, they make a big mistake. They just copy a lot of materials from the internet, like, uh, or they can just bring in some uh, materials from Blender Kit, uh, which is a powerful add-on, yeah, uh, and it has tons of materials. But some materials have so complex shaders, it will affect the performance uh, of yeah, rendering and just create your own materials use some textures and also texture resolution is also something important when you're uh, when you're uh, creating your projects do not use 4k or 8k textures never use them just use up to 2k or 1k will do the job uh, most of the time so please use smaller textures with your materials and also don't forget uh, the HDRI do not use 16k HDRI you don't need that 
most of the time you don't need that. Uh, instead, you, if you want a good background, you can just bring in an image and put as a background. Do not use a very uh, crazy high detailed HDRI. Just use 1K, 2K HDRI, that's fine. Just to light your scene. Another thing which, you, which can greatly uh, affect the performance uh, when you're working in Blender is add-ons. A lot of beginners make the mistake of enabling a lot of add-ons uh, thinking that they will use them, but actually they never use any of them, maybe 10%. If you enable 10 add-ons, you usually use one of them and the others are just, they are just left enabled. So please do not enable add-ons when you don't use them. Another thing which can greatly decrease the performance is the, uh, is the simulations in Blender. Simulations can be very, very uh, power consuming. Yeah? You really need to have a really powerful computer in order to have great simulations. So please use lower uh, resolutions in different stuff. Uh, of course, if you know how to use uh, uh, physics properties or physics uh, features of Blender, do not use crazy amount of uh, detail in your simulations. Uh, yeah, this is very specific, but yeah, if you, if you know how to use simulations, you probably already know uh, the effect of them in Blender performance. And uh, last but not least, uh, do not use other applications when you're using Blender. If you are on a lower end PC, as I said, uh, because Blender use a lot of computing power, like a lot of RAM, a lot of uh, CPU, yeah, processing power. So yeah, please close other applications when you're using Blender, if you feel that Blender is laggy. I think this has been helpful. And if you apply this knowledge in practice, I hope your journey in Blender will be much smoother and faster. Before you go, if you want to support this channel and also get an amazing Blender course with a big discount, check out my full Blender course on Udemy. The course contains more than 200 lessons and 36 hours of content. We will also create six real life projects from scratch during the course. And one last thing, if you enroll in the course and if you like it, please don't forget to leave a review there. This way you can support this channel and also help others to find the course easier on Udemy.